In chapter 10, we learned two different types of hypothesis tests. And so now we want to be able to tell when to use which one and also kind of consolidate some of the info we've learned in this chapter. Now, first thing to know is when are you going to know that they're asking you to run a hypothesis test? And one of the big signs for that is they'll say the words conduct a hypothesis test, <laughs> which is always a sign. Or if they ask for the p-value, you know, method, that kind of thing. Some other words that can show up and cue a hypothesis test would be um, proof, obviously just the word test. Can you conclude that? Um, and a level of significance. If you see a level of significance in the problem, that's a big sign that it's a hypo hypothesis test. Because there we go, I had to spell it right. All right, now what are the two types of tests we've learned? Well, we've learned a test for proportion and we've learned a test for a mean. Now for my mind, my, my money, the test for proportion is a little harder to spot. So how do you know it's a test for proportion? What are the things to look for? Well, obviously the word proportion in the problem or percents flying around, not just the percent for the level of significance, but other percents. Had, had to fix my word percent there. Um, survey or a poll. And actually, one other thing to note, if it's qualitative data, that's percentages, that's proportions. What do I mean? Well, if you're talking about a coin, heads versus tails, right? Then the proportion of heads, right? Heads would be your success, say, or tails would be your success. And then um, you can turn that into a percentage of heads. Or if you were going to do yes, no questions, right? That's the most common one, right? So we, we polled people. We asked them in this survey, this is the number of people that said yes, right? You turn that into a percentage, the percentage of people that said yes, that kind of thing right, or color, or religion, or, you know, anything that's qualitative. We turn those things into proportions, the percentage of people that are this religion, or the percentage of people that think this, etc. right? So things that seem qualitative are actually converted into proportions. And your hypothesis, hypotheses, your null hypothesis is always P equal to P0, where P0 is some number, right? So you'll have some number for P0. Um, this is from section 10.2. Now, a couple other things we want to make a note of. The technology on this piece, actually, before I even go to there, let me write page number. So write the page number that it is in your exam notes packet, which for me, right now is page 238, but that page might change. So write the page number that it is for you in your yellow packet, in your exam notes packet, right? So put that page number in there and then save for yourself your test statistic is Z0, right? That's how you can tell. It's, if I look at it on that page, if I look at step three, I can see it's Z0. I'm using the Z curve here. Z0 is my test statistic. This is this particular page, the hypothesis test for a single proportion. And I can see the stat crunch right there, which is what I'm about to write for the tech up above. So it's stat, proportion, stat, one sample with summary. Stat, proportion, stat, one sample. with summary. All right, now there's a couple other things. The normal piece. Well, normal on these ones is a little different. It's n times p0 times q0, where p0 is the number that we used from the zero hypothesis. So that's a little different. So n times p0 times q0 is greater than or equal to 10. We don't normally use P0 and Q0, but we do in this instance. And before I head to means, there is one other thing to be aware of, 
and it's from StatCrunch. So if I look at StatCrunch and I go to StatCrunch and I say stat, proportion stat, one sample with summary, the first thing it wants is the number of successes and the next thing it wants is the number of observations. So you have to know what those two things are. So we need to make a note right here for StatCrunch. X is the number of successes. N is the number of observations. And we all remember from chapter 8, hopefully, that P hat is X over N. But you'll need those two items to be able to run stat crunch. So to do this stat crunch, this proportion stat with summary right here, to do this, you'll need these pieces. All right, now what about the mean? Well, the mean's a little bit easier to figure out. Um, the mean, you'll see a data table, right? So if you see a data table in the problem, that's means. So a lot of times you'll have an actual data table. Sometimes you won't though. Sometimes you'll actually be given the mean or the average, and more importantly, given the standard deviation, right? If you're given the mean average and or the standard deviation, that's a sign that this is the mean problem, right? Now, the hypotheses for these ones are mu equals mu zero. Mu zero is gonna be a number. Right? So it'll be set up as mu equals a number. This will be a symbol, this will be a number. And the technology, well, let's see, let's go find the page in here and that'll tell us what technology it is. So in the course pack, it's not section 10.2, it's section 10.3. It's the test for a single mean. And you can see the technology right here, stat, t stat, one sample. If you have a data table, you say with data. If you're just given the, the mean and standard deviation, you say with summary. So it just depends on which one you're working at. And you can see your test statistic is T0 right here. Now for me, this current semester, it's page 239, but put in whatever page it is for you. And actually, I'm gonna separate these two sections just so they're, we're real clear that they're not the same. There, I drew a horizontal line. So everything above this is proportions, everything below this is means. Okay, so our page number, put your page number from your yellow packet from the semester you're watching it. Your test statistic is T0, right? And then our section number is 10.3. We just saw that. It said it on the yellow packet, actually, that it was 10.3. And then we want stat t stat one sample right and then i'm going to make a note about that down below here and then the normal piece is greater than 30 or a graph right so you could have a graph or you could have greater than 30 either one or technically i could just say it but you know so graph or n greater than or equal to 30. So the note for stat crunch I want to make about this one is that you choose with data if data table is given. You choose with summary if um, mean and standard deviation are given. Right? So that's how you can tell what to do with your technology. Sorry, that kind of bled over. <laughs> so I'm gonna separate this just so we're all clear. There we go. So 
from this side right here, you have two options, right? And those two options are down here. So if I call this option one, option two, that's this one and this one. You choose with data if you have a data table given to you in the problem and you have it all in StatCrunch already entered, or you choose with summary if your mean and standard deviation were given in the problem and you don't have a data table. There, it bugged me that I didn't have them written there, so I wrote them there. So those are the two options. One is with data, two is with summary, and those are how you choose which one.